Up until now, Chromium users have had access to a couple of features like Account Sync, which work through the Google API, but very soon that's going to be changing. So after March 15th, these features are going to stop working. So Account Sync is basically the ability to sync your passwords, history, bookmarks, addresses, phone numbers, basically all the information you can store inside of your web browser and then synchronize it between, you know, your install on your phone and the install on your computer and your other computer and basically have all this same information synced together when you have your Google account logged in. Also, things like geolocation will stop working. Geolocation is fairly self-explanatory what that does. That doesn't necessarily mean that geolocation is just going to stop working entirely because there are other ways to do geolocation outside of the Google API. Also, click to call will stop working, which I didn't actually even know was a feature until I was reading this article. Basically, inside of Chromium, if you see a phone number, you can click on that phone number and then it will try to call that number with your phone. I don't know when I would ever use that, but that's going to stop working as well. Also, the Chrome Spelling API. Now, this doesn't mean that spell check is going to just stop working in Chromium. It just means the enhanced spell check that is available in Chromium if you go and enable that. But I believe it's just disabled by default in every distro anyway. Also, the Contacts API, which is basically the ability to access your contacts. But really, the only time you're actually going to access your contacts is inside of Gmail. And Gmail has its own way of accessing contacts anyway. And then the Chrome Translate element, which basically just means that you have Google Translate automatically installed. And the reason they've given for doing this is security. So what they say here is that the inclusion of these exclusive APIs in open source builds meant that a small fraction of users could sign into their Google account and store their personal Chrome sync data, such as bookmarks, not just with Google Chrome, but also some third-party Chromium-based browsers as well, which seems like the entire point of using Google Sync, but that's not what Google seems to think. I think this is basically just an excuse because they want to make this an exclusive like Google Chrome feature. So if you want to use Sync, you have to be using Google Chrome basically to just get more and more of a monopoly on the web browser user base. But it just so happens a lot of the big Chromium forks don't use the Google API to do syncing anyway. So unless you're running pure Chromium, if you care about account sync, you're pretty much just going to be able to keep using it. Now, you might be thinking, okay, if I just don't update my web browser, the features are going to keep working or at least keep working in some sort of state. That's a good idea to think about. It's not actually the case though, because they're not releasing a patch that goes and removes this functionality because then you could just not use the patch. What they're going to be doing is straight up just revoking the API keys. So regardless of which version of Chromium you're using, whether it's packaged as a snap or it's like compiled from source, the feature is going to stop working. Now, you may be saying, okay, I'm running Chromium on my system, but some of this functionality already doesn't work. What exactly is the deal there? Well, some distros have decided that they're just going to go and disable the Google APIs before Google goes and does it themselves. One being Fedora. Now, I don't know all the distros that have gone and done this, I do know that Arch Linux still does have these features enabled inside of Chromium. So if you want to just keep using them, maybe you want to like get your data out of it or something like that, then you can go and do it on Arch. And obviously, it's still going to be working on the Windows side as well. Now, even though I really don't think anyone should have been using Account Sync, there is a good reason why I've made this video and this article makes a really good point. So how will Chromium users react to this decision? Probably with confusion. Those who don't hear about it before the cutoff date will likely be left confused and may assume that something is broken in their config or within their Linux distribution's packaging. Basically, I don't know what you guys are running. Some of you might actually be using Chromium and some of you might actually be using things like Account Sync and then relying on it. I want to make sure that everyone actually knows about this functionality being removed so that they can actually go and do something about it before the functionality is gone. Whether that's migrating to a new browser which has this functionality working through other means or, you know, saving your data or anything like that. I just want to make sure that people actually know that this is happening. Now, ultimately, I don't even think it really matters this functionality is being removed because a lot of it is very, very easy to replace. So in the case of account sync, there's lots of things you can sync between your browsers. There's only two things you should really care about. The rest of it you can very easily live without. 
One of those is your bookmarks. Now, you can go and manually export and import your bookmarks with Chromium, so if you need to sync them, that is always an option. You're probably not adding that many bookmarks, but it's actually going to be a hassle, and you can just do it like once a week or once a month, and even if you don't do that, do you really need all of the same bookmarks on every single one of your computers? I can't really imagine that's the case. And as for passwords, please do not store your passwords in your web browser because if you're doing that, you're very likely the same kind of person who also uses a very similar password for every service. Just go and download something like Bitwarden or any other password manager, randomly generate your passwords for everything, and it will be way more secure. Honestly, I don't think you get any value from sharing all of this information directly with Google. I have no idea what they're doing with it behind the scenes, but I can guarantee that they are data mining it. Now, as for doing things like geolocation, this is a little bit of a problem because doing things like searching for food nearby, that is very convenient and it's honestly something that a modern web browser needs to do. If you can't do that in your browser, it's just going to look like your search engine is broken. But Google isn't the only provider of geolocation, as we've seen from, say, Mozilla having geolocation. So there are ways to do geolocation outside of the Google API. It just might be broken for a couple of updates. But knowing this is happening so far in advance, I can't imagine that there's just nobody on the Chromium team who's working on a solution. Now, as for click to call, which if you've never seen, basically, if you go click on a phone number inside of Chromium, it's going to be like, hey, do you want to go and make that phone call on your phone? As I said, you probably didn't even know you had this feature. Whenever I need to go and search for a phone number to call, I just go and search for it on my phone. And I feel like that's what most people do anyway. If you desperately, desperately need this feature, there are plugins that can do this and there are other methods you can do this as well, but I've never even considered using it. As for the Chrome Spelling API, you've probably never used it. If you go into Spell Check, go down to Enhance Spell Check, that will actually enable that. Basically what it does is uses the same Spell Checker used in Google searches, but the basic Spell Check is perfectly fine. If you need a better Spell Checker, uh, Grammarly exists, there's plenty of other spell check plugins that exist, but I've never felt the need to actually enable the enhanced spell check and then send all of the text I'm writing to Google. It just doesn't seem like a feature that makes any sense. And then as for the Chrome Translate element, basically what it's going to do is, let's say we go to a Japanese Wikipedia page. What it's going to do is prompt you to translate that page from Japanese into your native language, which you can already do with the Google Translate extension, so if you really need this functionality, which I actually do think is kind of useful, go and install Google Translate and it does the exact same thing. I'm not entirely sure why this was built directly into the browser. Now, I can sort of understand why some people would be bothered by this, but really, I don't think it's that big of a deal. And if you just take the right precautions before it actually happens, it's pretty easy to negate any of the effects it would have had, and it just means less Google snooping into your data. Which, in my mind, is basically always a good thing. So let me know, do you actually rely on Google Sync, and I'm just completely wrong about it being removed, and it being removed is just a terrible thing, or are you like me and just say, basically good riddance? Let me know in the comments section down below. So before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David Monster, Will, Brennan, Chico Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Mitchell, Pity, Tony, Tushar, and all my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, the links down below to my Patreon, Subscribestar, LibrePay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere, and then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out. I really need to work out how I can, like, do this without bumping my mic. <laughs>